Hi and welcome to this new episode of our short blog application tutorial and in this uh, episode I'd like to show you how to add edit functionality to the blog post details page. Um, as always we start with importing the application as it was at the end of the last um, uh, episode. To do so we paste the URL from the uh, video description below here in to this input field, please make sure, sure to remove any white space here. The white spaces were just added to avoid, avoid that the, the YouTube link shortener um, yeah, shortens these URLs and, and makes it unusable for import. Um, now click on import from URL, uh, wait a couple of seconds and um, then you're ready to use the application as it was last time. Um, now let's see, here are our two pages. That's an overview page um, and this is the blog post details page. Um, now to make a, a page edit, editable, we just have to find the element which is responsible for rendering um, the, the output. In this case, it's the current dot text um, um, uh, template expression, which sits here in this paragraph element. And now, we will just turn this paragraph element into an active element by um, assigning an attribute key. Here, this, this is um, just text, the text attribute you find in the schema. And uh, to couple that or link this element to the active element, which, which triggers the edit action, which will be a button. We will um, uh, insert that in a couple of seconds. We just add um, an arbitrary, um, ID, for example, best practice or good practice here is to use the current uh, object ID um, we enter here. So now you see that this element, uh, this, this element's icon changes into a colorful icon. And um, now let's add uh, a button element to uh, this area here. Uh, the button element will also have a content element which renders the text on the button and move it up a little bit so that it sits directly here under this horizontal line. Now um, let's perhaps um, add another property or attribute to the data type blog post. Uh, we go to the schema. Uh, here we find our blog post class or type. And let's add a publication date, for example, publication date, which is, of course, of type date. Um, save it so we can now um, go to the data section and set publication dates. Today is the 8th of November. We can also set something in the future or in the past. Okay, now we return to the pages and we want to replace this part of, this is still static text, by the output of the, um, <clears throat> of this attribute. Now we just replace this static text by current dot publication date, like this curly braces, it's important. Um, and yeah, the preview here is still empty. That is caused by this preview not having a, um, a UUID assigned. So let's do the trick here, copy and paste a UUID, a blog post UUID into this field in the preview settings. Uh, reload the page and now we will see that Here's the date we just entered, and here's the text of this particular blog post. Now, um, this looks a little bit ugly or um, unusual to the human eye. Um, that's a date in the ISO 8601 um, standard, but we'd like to uh, format it a little bit so that it's more human friendly here. 
uh, there is a built-in function called date format which takes two parameters the first one is the the data itself so it's the publication date um, it's um, in in its raw form and a pattern a date pattern which is um, very typical um, let's let's just enter this like that should be now uh, come out as uh, sorry it's uppercase m for the month should come out correctly in this notation uh, which you might uh, everyone might be familiar with of course you can you can um, for example for European uh, date formatting you can just write it like that uh, or if you'd like to have a abbreviated month I think it goes like that okay so you can you can look up the, the the meanings or the notations of this date format it's a very uh, common uh, formatting okay now let's also turn this into a um, <clears throat> uh, uh, active element by setting the attribute key here to publication date set the same id here current dot id and here in this case we have to set date as a data type and the raw value is just current dot publication date this is important because um, we are using a formatted date for output here and to let the application know what the raw date uh, without transformation into a a uh, nice format looks like or is uh, we have to set this hint here okay and now we have two fields that uh, will be editable um, and now we have to configure the button which triggers the edit action so go to the edit mode binding here also first set the uh, ID so that the button is connected to these two input fields and um, now set the action the action is just edit and we set it also a type hint here edit blog post and the attributes are text and publication date and we also want to have the page reloaded after a successful after the data is, uh, has been successfully written to the database so we set the confirm action to true here that's it that's all you have to do in order to make this page uh, editable now let's uh, see if it works we open the blog posts um, details page um, which already has this uid in the url so we are already navigated to this uh, blog post now we click on this edit icon and we get a text input field here so we can change the data and also a text input field here and we could also change the data here and save it to the backend so reloading does not work so maybe we did something wrong ah, okay so we I just checked the wrong um, element here let's do a new reload and let's see yeah I can again change the data and the page gets reloaded and you see here this is the formatted date and here we have the raw date okay so um, if you see this you might wonder where is the date picker um, typically you would expect in this kind of edit mode um, this has something to do with the template we imported so technically structure adds uh, some dynamic elements like um, some javascript library and this is this depends on uh, jquery but the template itself also brings its own um, jquery library with uh, with it and so let's see in the in the in the page source here here is um, the jquery and bootstrap javascript at the end of the page and structure itself in the um, edit mode also inserts some 
libraries here and they con they they conflict so we have to remove this um, javascript from here and now you will see that in edit mode we get a nice uh, date and even time picker we can use here uh, which is of course much more convenient um, okay that's it that's what i wanted to show you in this episode um, i hope you enjoyed it as always if you liked it please give us a thumbs up or subscribe the channel and um, yeah if you have questions or any kind of feedback just leave us a comment in uh, below the video and um, hope to see you next time bye bye